Good morning, folks. We see some X-ray flashing from the incoming sunspot groups here. The largest was only a C8 flare. And regardless of how many sunspots there are, we should expect relatively lower flare activity until December when the planets line up again. And indeed, we do have quite a few spots. Only three have any magnetic complexity, however. Let's take a look. Delta class departing with blue and red mixing there. Got some mixing potential south incoming as well. And complexity near the lead of the northern incoming group. Zooming out in 211 angstroms, you see the northern coronal hole departing, very dark, and the dark southern polar coronal hole fairly set in his ways. If we zoom in up north, you can see the thin dark rope of a plasma filament snaking behind that coronal hole. It stayed stable, but also remains an eruption threat. Three days of solar wind telemetry show yesterday's rise in plasma temperature, speed, and density. However, this more intense stream has north pointing magnetism, and the BZ component is entirely positive, leaving our shield very solid. The increased intensity merely added energy to the system through a bit of an uppercut to the electron flux there. Let's put our feet back on the ground for yet another volcano eruption. This time, one of Japan's largest began belching ash and smoke first time it's erupted in 22 years. It has already disrupted flights, and we can only hope for a cooldown over the next day. More activity could begin to threaten large areas of air travel. We also had our second five-pointer in Colombia in as many days, and we took a moderate tremor off eastern India as well. We've got an article about how the yearly icebergs have begun shifting in Antarctica. I wonder if these could act to cool the oceans like big ice cubes. It's linked for you below. We've also got a nice bit on Hellas chaos on Mars. The impact zone has been re-imaged. I'd suggest it's worth a read. Let's kick the weather and zoom in on the South China Sea. I thought this thing was dying before it re-ramped last night and began breaking for the Vietnam coastline. In the South Indian Ocean, this storm moves ever closer to Madagascar, already engulfing small islands. Here are the overnight lows in the U.S. In addition to major cold up north, this extends all the way down into Florida where the Mobile Observatory is between Orlando and Tampa. It's 41 degrees at the Loves off exit 44. If you don't think it can snow here this winter, think again. The temperature delta from a day ago is fairly menacing, but easily understood when you see the mega high pressure node complemented by a quadrilow system out west. I just made up that word by the way, but it accurately describes that thing out there pulling warm air northward. Can't wait till that gets to the east. Meanwhile, let's not sleep on the snow alerts for this evening. In Europe, the only note is this massive low, kind of came out of nowhere, and these flows up from the south here drive thunderstorm warnings at the coastlines and in northern Africa. Precipitable water overlay shows the storm potential in the low and arching convergence in northern Australia, and even without showing it in New Zealand, we've got a curling flow up from the south to make a convergence that will indeed add a storm threat to the southeast as well. We've got shots of our star to close. It's 5.55 a.m. Eastern Time. That's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.